Hey there, everyone. So uh, first and foremost, happy Father's Day. So it's Father's Day in the United States. I know a lot of countries celebrate it on a different day, uh, but at least in the U.S. it's Father's Day. So again, happy Father's Day. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, so of course, because this is a tax channel, uh, we have to try to loop in tax with almost anything in life because uh, that's the way the U.S. tax system works, right? So uh, the question posed today for this video is, are Father's Day gifts taxable, right? So um, you're going to learn a little bit here today, and a lot of it's not going to be good news, but maybe it doesn't apply. But uh, the short answer is, well, it depends, all right? Like everything in U.S. tax... Uh, the answer to a question uh, always depends on the facts and circumstances. So, uh, broadly speaking, what are U.S. gift taxes? So, U.S. gift taxes apply potentially on any gratuitous transfer of cash or property, right? So, if you are giving somebody uh, cash or property and you're truly receiving nothing in exchange, right? Uh, so, there's no services, uh, you're not getting... Uh, any other property in exchange, even if it's below the value of what you're transferring. So it's truly a gratuitous transfer, then a gift tax might apply. Now, gift tax and reporting in the U.S. only applies on transfers that are considered taxable gifts, right? So we're looking at section uh, 2503B1 here. So for example, uh, if we have John gives Adam $12,000 of cash, let's say they're two brothers, John gives Adam 12 grand during 2022. Now the gift tax exclusion for 2022 is 16,000. So what that means is any gift you make generally, if it's below that annual exclusion, it's not a taxable gift, meaning it doesn't have to be reported. So in this case, if John made no other gifts to Adam during the year, uh, there's no need to report this on a 709 gift tax return, not gonna be subject to any gift taxes, right? So it's only if the amount, the fair value of that amount, so cash is obviously easy to value if it's property, if the value exceeds that annual exclusion on a per uh, donee basis, then you've got to report it potentially. So now this leads us into the question, right, are Father's Day gifts taxable? Well, there's, there's two questions to ask here. Who's the donor and then what's the amount? So why does the donor matter? Well, the donor matters because your spouse can give the other spouse, uh, basically an unlimited amount of money, and it's never reported as a gift, right? It doesn't go into your unified credit, uh, so it's not a reportable taxable gift on a 709, right? So in this example here, John and Jane are married. Jane gives John, her spouse, a car that was worth $65,000. Uh, the gifted amount clearly exceeds that annual exclusion, right? So let's say it's 2022. It's over the $16,000 amount, uh, but because it's between spouses, there's no issue there. Now, you see here I have in parentheses, uh, both are U.S. citizens. This is important, right? So there's different rules if you're a U.S. citizen and you married a non-resident. So if you're an expat and you live abroad and you marry somebody who is not a U.S. citizen, so they're not a U.S. tax resident, the spousal exemption doesn't apply to you generally. So that's why this is the general rule that most people are gonna be um, encountered with when they're watching this video. But just as you know, a kind of caveat to this, if you are a US citizen and your spouse is not a US citizen and you're, and you're living uh, and working outside the US, there, there are different rules for you, okay? So just keep that in mind. So now, what is, why does the amount of the gift matter? Well, if we go back to the annual exclusion amount, it's kind of obvious, right? The amount of the gift matters because if the gift, so if the father receives a gift from his children or um, other family members, the amount of the gift is generally not reportable and it's not taxable unless it exceeds that annual exclusion. So if we go back to this example here, we have John and Jane, uh, they have three kids, and the eldest son, Frank, wants to give his dad a nice Rolex for Father's Day. And the Rolex is a very nice one, so it's worth 18 grand. Now, technically, um, because the value of the watch exceeds the annual exclusion, Frank, the son, so the donor of the property here, has to report the gift on a Form 709, right? 
Now, I know what you're thinking. Like, in, in practice or in reality, nobody ever does this. But, look, I'm a U.S. tax attorney. I'm here to tell you what the rules are. And, and these are the rules, right? If you have a son that gives you a very nice watch or a car or just transfers you cash, and it's, again, a gratuitous transfer. There's no expectation of repayment, so it's not a loan. Uh, the, the donor of the property technically has to report the gift on a form 709. Now, uh, another big question I get often, and there's a lot of confusion in this space is, okay, is there a difference between reportable and taxable? Well, I would say yes, right? So just because you have to report a gift on a form 709, doesn't necessarily mean you're cutting the IRS a check, right? This is the one of the biggest misconceptions I see, especially with people making gifts of property early on in their careers when they haven't reached that unified credit amount. So just because uh, Frank had to report the $18,000 gift of the watch doesn't mean that Frank is actually paying a gift tax yet to the IRS. It really depends on the collective amount of gifts that he made leading up to that point, and then what is he gonna be making afterwards, right? So I have separate videos uh, that cover the unified credit on gift and estate taxes. So I'll put a link to that below because um, that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. But if you wanna get an understanding as to, okay, I, I get that I might have to report a gift if it's over the annual exclusion, but when do I actually pay the IRS money? When am I actually cutting a check for this supposed gift tax. So separate video, go check that out if you wanna learn a bit more about this. But um, yeah, the short answer here is, uh, again, um, like everything in US tax, it always depends on the facts and circumstances, who are the parties involved, what are the amounts. Uh, but the short answer is, uh, yes, Father's Day gifts are certainly taxable if they meet those thresholds. Uh, but obviously, you know, <laughs> Most of us um, in the real world are not getting uh, gifts of that high a value uh, for Father's Day. Maybe you get a set of golf clubs or, you know, maybe a pair of socks. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I uh, hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, please feel free to leave me a comment below. I try to answer as many questions on the channel as I can. Um, and, of course, like I said, I mean, this is part of... Uh, the gift and estate tax playlist. So if you want to learn more about U.S. gift and estate taxes, go check out that playlist. I have other videos on there that cover a variety of different issues uh, that you might need to be aware of when you are um, dealing with these gift and estate taxes from a U.S. perspective. Um, and this includes both U.S. citizens and then non-residents, right? So non-residents also have to deal with U.S. estate tax issues in some circumstances. Okay, so uh, that, that covers it for the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you, and take care.